Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, today I have the great pleasure and honor to receive Ilana uh, de Villiers, right? Uh, did I uh, pronounce uh, well your name? Exactly, de Villiers in French, de Villiers, de Villiers. in English. <laughs> okay, great. Um, she is a young entrepreneur uh, who is launching a very interesting startup uh, to fight against um, uh, um, food waste. Uh, and uh, with a very interesting uh, approach. So, hello, Ilana, how are you? Hello, Arise. First of all, thank you so much for having me today. I'm, uh, I'm super good. And, uh, and yeah, like the sun is out and winter is finally finished. So, of course, I'm great. <laughs> great, you. great, great. It's a very real pleasure to have you today with uh, the show. Uh, so, Ilana, could you please a little bit uh, talk about um, uh, your your background, where, where, where are you from, and uh, what did you study, and um, the kind of um, uh, what, what can I say? Because I, I, I see on your LinkedIn that you are you are a lawyer by training, and, you, and, and also you work it as a business developer. So it's very interesting to see that you have this this um, how can I say this uh, two kind of approach, you know, at the same time uh, very uh, legal. Uh, um, mindset and also as a business developer because you know it's a little bit uh, at the open in the business developer or always you know want to go uh, fast and the lawyer mindset is to to more pre conservative so so I, I would like to hear about all of these ones. <laughs> of course, of course, it's uh, well I have uh, as you said a double background so law and business. Uh, so in entrepreneurship and innovation. Now I will give you the background behind because of course uh, my life changed and I decided to have another path. Well, it suddenly happened because I find purpose in my life. So basically I was, uh, I was studying law. I was studying my master's degree. And of course I did a lot of trainings in, in law offices. And uh, it was in Strasbourg. It was in 2015-16, you know, when um, all the scandals of, uh, of food waste arise. And I was in this uh, legal background, so I actually dig deeper into the subject because it interested me because it was, first of all, shocking uh, that you could see all of these amounts of food going to the bins of supermarkets, nonetheless still edible and consumable because the expiry dates were not attained. Um, and one day, I, a friend invited me over dinner, and at the end of the dinner, he told me, yeah, hey, Ilana, do you know where the products come from? And I was like, well, I guess that they come from the supermarket of your street. <laughs> and he was like, well, not that far. I actually dumpster dive the products in the bin of the supermarket of my street. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was super, super shocking, right? So uh, just to be frankly honest, I lost 35 tons of shades, thought I would die. But in, uh, in the end, I'm, st I'm still alive, as you can see. <laughs> um, so it's potentially, yeah, it's, it's, it's all started like there. Like, because, yeah, it was super shocking to have a friend dumpster diving. We talk about dumpster diving. We talk about food waste. We talk about poverty and all of that. And we never could imagine that it could happen to your neighbors, to, to your family, to, you know, the people around you. And this was actually the green light for me. So um, I, I had an idea. It was basically to link the men to need. So to link the products that are still available but going to waste to people who need that. Because as a student, you might know, and as everybody know in the world, I guess, you know, having a tiny budget and living on this budget is kind of difficult. So the first budget that actually shrinks is the budget for food. So eating pasta, rice, potatoes and instant noodles to the best is not really a stereotype, but it's the satisfying. <laughs> that, uh, that, that reminds me of some old uh, memories about noodles. <laughs> See, see what we all have this memory in common. You know, we talk about our generations, the generations before, and it's still the same. You know, we, we all have this hard life of a student that is actually, yeah, you're not eating super healthy because you're obliged to. And if you need to eat healthy, you need to have a, a huger budget to, 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 do those, to do so. And in 2015, 16, you know, there were not a lot of solutions. Well, actually zero in France uh, in order to eat healthier at cheaper prices, right? So... So all of this led to, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's try to start something, you know, just link with the men to need. Supermarkets anyways need to get rid of those products. And people who have less income would like to have access to those qualitative products. So that is how it all started. 
of obviously I, I called my family, I exposed my idea, they supported it. They were like, okay, go for it. So since I had a law, law background, what I did is I already trademarked the, the next day after the green light of my family, mm-hmm. um, the project. It took obviously a bit more than one day, uh, you know, the legal background. But um, it really served me a lot because I saw a lot of loopholes in the law and there was something there and there was an opportunity to see it. So, of course, I was a bit more conservative, as you know, lawyers have this strict way of handling things. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, I was like, okay, you potentially need to uh, follow studies that will help you to develop this company. So because obviously I had no background in business. Uh, except, you know, jobs on the side as a student whatsoever, but it was still not, well, not really business, right? So I decided to follow the entrepreneurship and innovation master's degree at the University of Luxembourg, which uh, helped me a lot. And they accepted this wonderful idea. And so this is how it all started. This was the are first you, are, steps of F3. Are you yourself from uh, Luxembourg or uh, the Benelux or are you from France? Sorry, can you repeat? Um, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, are you yourself from uh, Luxembourg or the Benelux or are you um, from France? No, I'm a, I'm a proper European, so I'm half Dutch, half mm-hmm. French, living in Luxembourg. <laughs> okay, great. So that, that explains why you, you speak so, so, uh, so perfectly French and also uh, Dutch, right? That, that's really nice. I, I don't consider my English or French or Dutch perfect, but... Uh, I say I, I can still talk, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> now, believe me, you, you, your, your language is, is excellent. Uh, just a question about um, uh, this, um, this uh, era of business that you are uh, committing to. Uh, I know that uh, there is a huge uh, regulation, you know, for for the food when they are when they they reach, you know, the the. So their date, their, 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 sorry, their deadline, um, uh, and most most supermarket uh, chain also are very scared, you know, to, to let people to eat this this food because they don't want to be to have to have problem, you know, uh, uh, and and to be sued at the court. So how do you deal that with this with this, uh, um, with this regulation? Well, actually, you know, regulations, uh, what is written is written, right? So you need to follow the regulations. But nonetheless, uh, you have very particularities and a lot of particularities in the supermarket area. So there is a lot of practice um, that you need to understand. So obviously for supermarkets, which is totally normal, right? Um, They had already problems by uh, letting people take the food and all of that, because you know how humans can be. Um, and it led to several trials already. So obviously they, they also have to protect themselves, right? Um, and on the other hand, you know, you have so many people that, that unfortunately, and especially, you know, due to Corona, they lost their jobs and, you know, the economical situation is not potentially the best today. Um, so you have a lot of people that, that actually want to eat healthy and you know this this eating healthy habits is growing more over years so obviously there is a huge paradox there so how to deal with it is basically we are offering a service for supermarkets and for consumers right so we take the consumer's point of view into consideration because we co-created this app so we co-created an app in order to see what consumers really wanted to see and not create something and force it on the market because force it on the market is 50 50 percent chance mm-hmm. um so this is how we started the adventure right so we created this uh this beautiful app and slowly but surely so we started our activities with Deleuze part of the uh, whole Deleuze group and also Pal Center which is a Luxembourgish national chain mm-hmm. and it rapidly grew and uh, so we seized also opportunities on the market we did a lot of astonishment reports because for us, you know, new in, new in this industry, uh, we were a bit shocked on certain processes and, and we wanted to help them further. And so today we have a B2B2C mission, meaning that we are looking at food waste, but from its roots. The roots is not the, the tons of products at the end. No, the roots is the management system. Mm. Bad management system or not really a bad management system. I would say a not appropriate 
management system. And so by working with them, we basically seized this opportunity. And so we, we said, okay, so we, we already have a software, you know, digesting the data. What, what should we do about it? You know, we need to maximize something in order to help them further, get access, like develop digitalization, rapidly for them we're in 2021 we, we absolutely need to increase digitalization and you know multinationals um potentially they have the means right but dig digital in the digital area is growing fast and is moving fast so we really need to offer services for them in order for them to have access to better digitalization but also tailored digitalization on their level so we have several products today, enabling them well to have access to this digitalization, but also to use FRA app as a showroom because basically the FRA app is a showroom for them. Uh, I have two questions. One is uh, with um, the support of uh, the entrepreneurship program and the incubator of the Luxembourg University. Um, how did they uh, bring you uh, their support? Um, uh, how, how did you get your first meeting with the supermarket chain uh, executives and, and deciders? And the second question is about the gap itself, and maybe maybe I will ask it ask it uh, after. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so your first part of the question was the help of the university and the university incubator. Well, basically. Uh, the network of them is excellent. The expertise that they have are excellent. As a startup, you know, you don't have like trillions of financial means. You did a family fools and friends round. So, you know, you try to, you try to move on on this and, and to optimize the budget as you can. And this beautiful university has such a wide network, so good experts that they helped us a lot. They helped us a lot to develop certain areas of the business to give us a background and also, you know, this open-mindedness and and because we were every day in this in this field and so they they were outsiders and helping us you know to have this outside look now uh the first client it was not via university uh it was basically um <laughs> you're gonna laugh uh so we have social media right and linkedin is the, is the social media platform for excellence for uh, the professional area Absolutely. And uh, so we made certain research and we're like, okay, these clients are the perfect, perfect for us. So we do a KYC, obviously, before contacting any clients because we are not contracting with all of the clients, right? They need to fit our culture and they need to respect the environment and sustainability, of course. Sure. So sure. not all of them are, of course, the perfect clients for us. But of course, we can give them also help in this, in this, uh, in this areas, only if they commit to it, for sure. And uh, so the first clients, what we did is we screened who is the country manager uh, of this chain and we contacted him uh, directly on LinkedIn. And basically in 30 minutes, we, we managed to have the first meeting. And this is how, uh, how we got our first partner. This is great. And um, without uh, talking confidential, just about the confidential discussion, uh, how was his... Um, how did he receive you? I uh, you know as an entrepreneur, you know, he, he, he certainly was a, he's a, certainly is a big professional, you know, with a lot of responsibility, big budget, etc. How how was the, the meeting? Was it uh, receptive to your to your idea or uh, how was it? <laughs> well, he was amazing. Like for it's it's thanks to to him that we are there today. Like without him, uh, it would have never been possible. The first meeting was brilliant. He saw immediately the potential. He saw uh, that it was really a great, a great tool and uh, that it could really help and that this was needed. And it was back in 2017, right? So it was really at the, at the premises of, uh, of food waste uh, solutions. And uh, of course, he, he immediately saw the benefits of it. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was more than positive. And of course we were stressed. Huh? It was our first client's meeting. We were like uh, overstressed <laughs> and uh, we're thinking, you know, the, 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 the worst case scenarios already in our head, but not at all. It was like an awesome meeting and it was super positive. And again, thanks to him, nothing would have happened today. So I am grateful every day for this meeting to have happened. And, uh, and we prove every day that yes, it's worthwhile. And, uh, and that we will certainly not deceive our partners. And during this first um, meeting, uh, during this first commercial meeting, very important for you, um, 
Do, did you have any something to show? I don't know, some mock-up or, or prototype or nothing, just, 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 just your idea and your pitch and your, and your motivation, you know? Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good question. Well, I think now I can talk about it today because yeah, well, two years and a half ago, like, uh, well, it was even more in 2017. It's like four years ago. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, four years ago. So we, we developed, we, we were very creative, right? And the master of entrepreneurship and innovation helped us a lot to structure all of that. And basically it was an idea that we sold. Yeah. And um, of course, we presented already something existent and all of that. We made a lot of research. My legal background helped me a lot as well to uh, to get us through to you know analyze the um, the annual reports of supermarkets and all of that. So for us, it was a perfect moment, you know, surfing on the law and and like knowing the loopholes and when they where they could actually you know benefit from it and being green because it's not because you're green that you're no that you're an ong yeah it needs to be clear and understood by everyone you can obviously do green business and it exists um so yeah so basically um in gross terms i would say we sold paper <laughs> but it gave us the green light and so uh, you know fire under our asses and so uh, once we had this positive uh, positive response, we immediately developed everything. So we had developers. Our CTO today was our board advisor uh, by the time, and uh, and so yeah, it it moves pretty quickly. We did the co-creation sessions three times uh, the year in order to outperform uh, the developments. But again, the co-creation sessions were really funny as well because the first co-creation session was the following: it was a test my app, but there was no app to test only screenshots paper yeah. <laughs> screenshots and uh and so yeah this is how we we developed and we gather feedback and uh, we developed a, a good product that has a, a good market fit and uh and so yeah the start of fra was very funny let's say and the co-creation you, you did it with the, with the supermarket chain uh, uh or with the with the clients also of the supermarket so with end consumers, not with the supermarkets, because um, all supermarkets, you know, they work potentially 50% the same, but you have a lot of particularities. So you need sure. to tailor to all of your clients. But what is important is to understand the end consumer, right? What end consumers want, what the shoppers want, Absolutely. what they want to see in supermarkets. Because the supermarket area today is even more complex than before. So you know, to attract customers, how to retain customers, what do the customers want to see and be adapted to the environment and sustainability, right? So it was very, very complex, but we managed to, to get it through. Um, how did you recruit uh, your customer to work with you? Uh, uh, did you do it with a content, ma content marketing strategy, you know, by blogging or video or, or type form? Uh, how did you how did you how did you manage to recruit your your uh, your customer your end user to to, to co-design with them the solutions? Well, we had uh, we have a company in Luxembourg uh, that is test my app from uh, Philip Brother, mm -hmm. and uh, he basically managed everything. You know, creating those focus groups and uh, and doing the questionnaires, type forms, uh, all of that. You know, the interviews we had one to one interviews with all of the end customers. So, uh, so yeah, this is this is how we managed to, well, to first uh, to our uh, to develop those co-creation sessions. And on the other side, what we did was we also uh, did questionnaires in Luxembourg, and we were in the streets, and and we were asking a lot of people, and we actually managed to gather over three thousand responses, plus the focus groups. And so we we believe we actually gathered the real insights of. Uh, of the Luxembourg, uh, Luxembourg country. You need to, to count that we are only 600,000 people and already having uh, 3,000 feedbacks, over 3,000 oh. feedbacks, sorry, plus the focus groups. Basically, we, we believe it was really representative of Luxembourg. Wow, wow, this is uh, amazing. Um, now let's uh, talk a little bit about the solution itself and how it works. Uh, even we don't have a, a screenshot or I think people can understand because I um, I will put all the link uh, in, below uh, your interview so people could, could can uh, then visit the, the website and, and download uh, uh, the app if they live in Luxembourg. Uh, I'm in front, so uh, I couldn't test it, but I see some screenshots and 
And if I understood, uh, if I understood well how it works, um, uh, on the app, I can choose uh, a product uh, available in the nearest the near market, market, right? And the product is uh, reaching its, its deadline. And uh, because it's reaching its, its deadline, I have a discount on it, right? Something like that? Definitely. So it's ex it's exactly like that. Grossi is exactly like that. So as an end customer, you can scroll all the products that are close to the expiry dates around you. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, we do video recipes in order to inspire you of how to cook them. You have access to the written recipes as well. Uh, you can see the, the impact on CO2 level, money-wise, so how much you have saved, right, by doing this act by buying those products at cheaper prices. Uh, you have access to a lot of great features that I, I will let you discover. So basically it's an app that helps you to grocery shop. It goes a bit further. And now, uh, how many uh, products can you, uh, how many eatable products can you uh, uh, reference on your app? Do you have all or are you still in kind of beta test? You are, you're focusing on a group of, uh, a group of food or you already have all the food available in the, in the supermarket? Well, we have all the food available of the supermarkets that are oh. marked up. So <laughs> wow. it's, it depends the category. Yeah. Mm. And, and the food are automatically linked to, to your app, right? The, the supermarket, your partner uh, supermarket um, links the product uh, he has in restaurants directly automatically with the information system to, to your app. So you know that there is a new reference that reaches its deadline and they offer you a, a price or something like that. Exactly, depending on your preferences. So the app is hyper personalized per consumer and the app is free by the way. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> it's a unique experience and uh, the products are updated in real time. So there are no uh, bad surprises, you know, you're informed if, you know, the stocks are low whatsoever. So it's, it's, it's not a surprise. You're, you know what you're choosing is for you. So you will not waste the products at your place since you know what you're choosing and you know what you're buying. Mm -hmm. And you as an end consumer have the choice. Um, I meant, uh, do you, are you, are your company plugged to the database, to the database of the supermarket directly? And you have the information, uh, uh, the digital information, uh, it's something, uh, as well, um, how can I say, uh, as immediately when it's available, you know, uh, about uh, the, the, the deadline of the product or, or um, staff of the supermarket need to, to, I don't know, to, to fill a form and send you something like that. Well, staff of the supermarkets do not do anything that change inside. They have no additional processes. They still do their usual professional life. There is strictly nothing that changes for them. Right. We wanted to ease the process as much as possible. So it's on an IT level, obviously, uh, that we are integrated. And depending on the supermarket we have in front of us with the IT capabilities, we have different ways of onboarding systems. So in some cases, we have the database. In other cases, we have the products and we decorate the data mm -hmm. uh, around it. So we are a tech company. So we, we managed to, to do a lot of magical stuff. Great, great, great. Uh, fascinating. So now you have, you have uh, one co-founder, right? Or two? How so yeah, we started uh, originally, I asked uh, one of my friends by the time to to join the super adventure. But as you may know, you know, entrepreneurship is not made for everyone. And uh, we decided to split our ways. And the CTO, who was our advisor by the time, uh, still there so since 2017, is still in the company and is our CTO now full time. Really? And, uh, and so, yeah, I can say that, yes, I have a, I have a, a co-founder now. So you're two, two people? No, 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 no. The other co-founder is a shareholder. So she's not part of the company since 2019, December uh, anymore. Um, she's still part of the history, right? She of developed course. it uh, in the start with us and all of that. But yeah, as, as I say, you know, entrepreneurship is not made for everyone. And uh, otherwise <laughs> we would know about it. And, uh, and yeah, she decided to, to have another way. And. And yeah, today she's part of the history, but not part of the company anymore. Yes, my question is uh, more about the operation right now. So you are, you are, you are two people working this amazing uh, 
system just two, right? You're two people. Today in the company? No, 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 no. We're 17. Ah, you're 17. Ah, yes. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, okay, okay. Thanks. Uh, great, great decision. So, 17 people who are working on this great system uh, uh, and making, making, making it work. Great, great. Yeah, uh, and uh, and we are growing. So I said today we're 17. Potentially in several months we will be a little bit more. Well, potentially it's not potentially it is the case. So the company is yeah is growing. So we started uh, we started two then three of us, mm -hmm. and then one of the co-founders left, and we grew like drastically. So today we're 17 in two years and a half, which is uh, which is pretty good. And um, and yeah, we'll continue. Wow, we'll continue wow. that way. Great. This is fascinating. Uh, the, um, I have also a question about uh, uh, your your fundraising. Uh, did you raise funds with, with business angels or venture capital or your partner, supermarket? Did, did they commit uh, uh, as, as a financial partner also? Uh, so yes, we we fundraised. We fundraised with VCs, business angels, uh, and and all of that. And actually, past year, so during the Corona, smart decision to fundraise. Uh, but we managed to, to fundraise our our seed or extended seed. I don't know how you can call it. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud of it. Now concerning uh, investments from our partners, uh, no. So we, uh, as much as we, as we like working with them and we are developing solutions for them, we need to keep our neutrality right. And uh, sure. we are there for all supermarket chains. So it would be a bit difficult, you know, to... Um, to have investments from one chain and and still be Independent, still be capable to develop in other uh, competitive chains. Mm. Uh, and what about the the commercial uh, expansion strategy? So you started now. You cover Luxembourg. Uh, what's the next step? Uh, the Benelux, uh, France, all the Euro continental Europe, and United States. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, of course, we, we have a particular uh, development strategy. So what we did is uh, we did a product market fit for two years and a half in order to be sure that once we, you know, once we go outside of, of our borders, uh, we can uh, we can have a scale up that is worth the scale up. Mm -hmm. uh, so our strategy is first, of course, uh, extend in Europe and we will go in countries where food waste is really a nightmare. And as we mentioned, of course, North America is uh, is very bad in food waste, uh, such as Asia is very bad at food waste. Sure, sure. So, you know, we will develop in the world since food waste is an issue on an international level. Mm. And uh, and yeah, where, wherever our services are needed, we will develop. And uh, uh, if you allow me two more questions about the culture, um, the culture of the supermarket uh, change. Uh, it's also dependent of uh, the you know the nationality. I don't know if the if the management of uh, the German uh, supermarket chain uh, have the same culture in regards of food uh, waste than the French ones. Uh, did you did you notice this kind of difference? Or they are all, all very open to to the question and, and to solve this problem. Well. You need to, you need to, of course, and you mentioned it, uh, to take into consideration the culture uh, of the supermarket chain, right? Where, where the supermarket chain was born, the founders and nationality behind, mm -hmm. understand how they are working. And, and as you mentioned, you know, Germany is not working as the same as France, mm -hmm. as Luxembourg is not working the same as Belgium, as we are not working the same uh, as the US, right? So we really need to adapt to each culture in order to understand the issue and where it comes from. Now, obviously, you don't only have the culture that plays it, you have the laws. And if you don't know the laws from each country, well, it's going to be a bit difficult for you to, to navigate. Yeah, but with your background, I think it's, uh, it's more easy uh, to, to decipher all these all this particularities, right? For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and that's why I'm, I'm, really, I'm really grateful to have studied law at a, and, uh, you know, basically I wanted to become a lawyer, but I really realized quickly that it was not really meant for me. And I, want, I wanted to do something impactful. So, you know, law is, is useful and it will be useful in the, in the future years and it helps us to navigate pretty quickly as well. Yeah. Great. 
Uh, Elena, it was a fantastic moment because uh, your startup is really amazing. Your adventure is fascinating and you did a, such a great job with such an important problem and the solution you bring you bring uh, into the to the world is, uh, is very very nice and I think I think uh, uh, you will you will have a great success uh, in the past, in the future years and I hope to have you again in the show. If you have uh, one advice to a younger yours younger self or to any young uh, entrepreneur or student who, who dream to launch his own startup, what what would what would be what would, sorry what would be this uh, advice? I would say, um, you know, everybody has dreams and you need to, to go and get your dreams, right? You need to be motivated. But what is really necessary to attain your dreams? Because nothing is impossible, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even the world impossible says I am possible. So um, <laughs> you need to, to have discipline. Discipline is something that will drive you, that will help you achieve your goals, attain your dreams. And voila, nothing is impossible. As long as you're disciplined and motivated, you will, you will manage to get it through. Absolutely. Et voila. I totally agree with you. Ilana, it was a great, great moment. Thank you again uh, for this moment. Uh, I, I think people will love uh, your story and your startup uh, when they will hear about it. And thank you again. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this great opportunity. So uh, yeah, uh, please download the FRA app if it's available in your country, obviously. And, and if other supermarket chains are interested to work with us, they can directly contact us, obviously. Uh, this was my little commercial <laughs> <laughs> commercial say. But thank you so much for having me. And uh, I wish you I wish you all a wonderful day, if it's the day or evening, if it's the evening. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.